when you find uh, people without a community, without right. law, without t any understanding of how to establish community, how does that, how do you bring it about? John Marini is a senior fellow of the Claremont Institute and a professor of political science at the University of Nevada, uh, Reno. Uh, and uh, he is our guest today on The American Mind. Welcome, John. John, you've written a lot about uh, John Ford, the Hollywood director. And as a political scientist, you've written an extraordinary amount about uh, John Ford. How did you get interested in him and in his films? I guess I became interested when I saw the possibilities of the Western in terms of political thought, uh, because Westerns deal with things that uh, politic, political theory is about. It, the, the, it deals with foundations, how the rule of law is established, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of forces threaten communities and, and even civilization itself. All of those were just the kinds of things that political philosophers uh, talked about. And Ford just brought that, particularly in his Western, he brought it to a high art. And he's very, very careful and he's very consistent in how he presents his arguments. And I mean his movies, but you can, mm -hmm. if you follow his arguments, you can see that, he's, that he has a coherent understanding of the problem. I think Ford himself understood the Western as a way to tell America's story. Did he make it, westerns from the very beginning of his career? He started, uh, yeah, in the silence. He made do uh, probably a uh, hundred west, silent westerns. Is that right? With Cheyenne Harry Carey, who was uh -huh. one of the big western stars of that period. But then he stopped making westerns after the silent period for about 10 years. His first western that became really, I think, the most important Western to reveal what, was, what the possibilities of the Western uh, were, was Stagecoach in 1939. And in that movie, he also introduced the man who would become the greatest okay. Western star, and, uh, and Ford groomed him. The Ford, young John Wayne. You're John Wayne, uh -huh. yeah. In fact, he, Ford found John Wayne in 1926, so almost 15 years prior. Found him at USC playing football. He and Ward Bond were both on the team. He saw that these guys would be good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he, he told Wayne, he, he put him in a, in a couple of his movies in small roles, but he basically said, go learn the craft. And Wayne, for about a decade in the 1930s, just play, uh, did a lot of B-Westerns. And finally in 39, Ford said, okay, this is the time. And You're ready. Launched, uh -huh. yeah, launched his career. Now, the Western interests you more than the non-Westerns, the, the war movies, the other kinds of movies yeah. that, uh, that John Ford made. Uh, and what's peculiar to the Western more so than to... Uh, yeah. Well, I think the Western allows a director that has talent to be able to get outside of the conventions of the time you live in. Mm -hmm. You present, you, you, you can get back to the real questions, not through the, the lens of, of whatever it is that are the prejudices of the time you live in. So you get back to the most primitive kinds of questions, the, most, uh, uh, the first questions. Uh, when you find a people without a community, without right. law, without any understanding of how to establish community. How does that, how do you bring it about? I mean, those are the, those are the questions that... So you're in a state of nature, or at right. least... Right, you start, uh, the state of like nature. Something like a state of nature. Yeah. The state of nature is, is if you look at most of Ford's Westerns, uh, like Lib uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, mm -hmm. those questions are pretty clear. Uh, in fact, his... I think his most profound movie, The Searchers, goes even deeper mm -hmm. than the origins of community. He goes back to the, to the origins of civilization itself and, and the, the, the dangers to civilization 
that are posed not merely by those forces outside, let's say, the, the forces that threaten civilization, in that case, in, in, it, it was the Indian, but within the community, in the case of somebody like an Ethan Edwards, whose passions mm -hmm. are just as dangerous to community as the passions of the... Of, also of, played by John Wayne. Right, John Wayne is in, in the, the searchers. searchers. Yeah. Now, when you think of a state, state of nature, though, you think, uh, you might think, you know, classically of the social contract and mm -hmm. equal individuals coming together out of their... Um, prudent self-interest, uh, making a social contract and creating a community. But the Western uh, usually features a, a strong man or a, right. or a lawgiver or, or a man with a gun. Right. Uh, and how do, how do those two rather different traditions go together? This, you know, the thinking of community as something that grows up out of equality and consent and thinking of a community that's sort of founded by one great man or by uh, mm -hmm. several great men. Yeah, well, I think what, for, what, what the Western shows is a condition of equality because there's, there's no rank. There's mm -hmm. no possible, there's no, there's, there's no way in which one can conventionally determine inequality. Mm -hmm. But then you have the, the, the specter of natural inequality. So the when you look at how it is that, that commu how, so let's say the rule of law is established, it doesn't just get established by people saying, let's get together and establish the rule of law, because you're always going to have bad guys mm -hmm. who don't want to <laughs> follow the rules. Yes. So you need, a, you need somebody like a Tom Donovan and the man who shot Liberty Valance to establish the conditions where the rule of law becomes a possibility. Mm -hmm. So you have equality, roughly, rough equality in the state of nature. That is a given. I think in the Western, it, 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 it's a given because you've left all, let's say, in most of the Westerns, the people that come West, they come from the East, where you had distinction, mm -hmm. you had conventions, you had a past. And that past, of course, determined in a certain way w what your possibilities would be in life. But when you go West, possibilities are different. Mm -hmm. Because there are opportunities that simply don't exist when you have an established order. So you open up the possibility of, of uh, a, a new way of life. So you have a chance to start over, really. And when you do start over, you have to start from the bottom. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the... That's the uh, not exactly a clean slate, but no, something exactly, close to one, yes. Right, because you already have language right. and you have a number of things that that uh, that, pre that, that presupposes right. uh, 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 a possibility of community. But then you have different ways of, of thinking about community mm -hmm. and freedom. You know, the freedom of, say, the Indian is different than the freedom of the settlers. Right. The freedom that is without restraint, without law, and dependent still upon a kind of hierarchy with a chief, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I think the Western for Ford was a way of, of trying to come to grips with his view that he, I think, uh, came to uh, in 1939 when, when the war was approaching, the mm -hmm. Second World War. I think Ford saw that Western civilization was endangered, was endangered not merely by the barbarians, uh, the Nazis or, what, or the various other bar, uh, foreigners. Bar yeah, those t typical <laughs> regimes. Yeah, but, but, by but from within as well. Within, yeah. yeah, from within. And because he was not confident that Western man could be taught the virtues that were necessary to, to preserve mm -hmm. decent civil society or decent civilization. And after the war, he began with My Darling Clementine. That was the first movie he made after the war. And, uh, and, and then it, in the, the rest of his life, he made probably another close to 15 Westerns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That became the dominant uh, form that he used. In fact, that toward the end of his life, when he was interviewed, he had a documentary done by Dan Ford, his grandson. And he said, when I pass away, he said, I want to be remembered as John Ford, the man who made Westerns. Uh -huh. So he, uh, and now you know, Ford was the most honored director still in the history of Hollywood. 
but he never won an Academy Award for a Western. Is that right? All of his Academy Awards were for other movies, but none for Westerns. Hmm. Now, um, his concerns about the, uh, the internal strength of the West um, and its external viability as well, uh, remind me of, um, of the concern of, the, of Americans and, and progressives among them at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century. I mean, that's when the form of the Western first right, emerges. Right, right, right. Um, and uh, Owen Wister is usually said to have been the first author of a Western mm -hmm. novel who was a friend of Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt was a great man of the West who right. sort of recreated himself as a young man by coming out to the West and, and um, leaving his city-fied New York ways behind him and becoming a you know, rugged individualist. Um, why, why does the Western emerge then? And, and what were um, men like Teddy Roosevelt interested in? What did they find in the West that they couldn't I, find I, in the East? Well, the Western movie and the actual events of the Western, the people who participated in the West, this is, they're still alive when Ford is, is, is making yeah. his movies. Mm -hmm. He knew Wyatt Earp. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wyatt Earp participated in the, bat, in the uh, gunfight at the O.K. Corral, but in 1917, he told uh, John Ford, he showed them where they were standing, et cetera, et cetera. So you had this period where after the Civil War, because the inspiration for all the Westerns and m most of the events in the West after uh, uh, that period are the Civil War is over. Mm -hmm. You have s former warriors. You have people who go west. You have still the 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 uh, the wild character of the west. Mm -hmm. You still have great challenges. One of the uh, Colonel Dodge, the guy who we know is the the man who uh, Dodge City is named after. But Colonel Dodge lived until probably 1930 and beca became a very wealthy man. Uh, and he said, "But it, I lived a, a life with a great." wealth and luxury, he said, but the, the greatest time I ever had in my life was on those cattle drives, because uh -huh. he was the one that started some of those cattle drives north. So there's a great deal of adventure in the West. John, does, uh, does the Western change America? It doesn't, I don't think it changes America, but it reveals something about America mm -hmm. to Americans that was a good for them in the that, people that experienced that. That presumes then that they didn't know it before. They didn't know They it, needed yeah. the Western to find something important about themselves. Yeah, and, and they needed it to reinforce the, 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 the in, a, in, a, in a way that, that you could uh, find, even as a form of entertainment, to, to reinforce the moral virtues, mm -hmm. the things that are necessary for people, not just extraordinary people, but for ordinary people to live in communities. So, yeah, I think it, uh, that generation after the war, uh, when the Western became really dominant both in motion pictures and, and in the early days mm -hmm. of television, I think when you talk to people now and they, they talk about how important the Western was mm -hmm. to them, how it, and how they, many people, that's why you have a Turner Classic or you have these encore Western channels. Right. A lot of people go back and look at those things. And I remember when I gave a talk, uh, uh, someplace down here, I gave a talk on the Western, and a woman came up to me afterward, well-dressed woman, this was in uh, one of the, you know, areas around here. And she said, uh, you know, I, her husband was obviously a very successful man. She said, I've often wondered about why my husband liked Westerns until I heard your talk. Thank you for telling me why. She, she, he liked them, but she couldn't understand why. And I think that, that a lot of the, the generation that fought the Vietnam War and the various others, that is, those are the kinds of inspirations. Those are the kinds of things that, 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 that gave them uh, uh, something to, to, to look up to and to, and to live up to. Mm -hmm.